Hi, everyone. Welcome to part two of our five-part series on Your Data, Your Way that sort of highlights the different flexible strategies that you have when dealing with your data in Hull. Part two, we are going to focus on identity resolution. So we have 30 minutes and a ton of content. Um, hopefully, we can get in really deep and you know, show you some code, but also kind of um, keep the big picture in mind, too. So just to introduce myself real quick, hi, I'm Tim Liu, head of product here at Hull. Um, I've been doing data startups my entire career. My previous startup, we were doing uh, electric and natural gas data. Um, so very different market. Um, I can analyze Fortune 500 uh, energy bills. We'll never have to do that in my life ever again. Moved into marketing and sales data, which is um, arguably much more fun. Um, but have seen a lot of different types of data problems across so lots of different verticals. And um, I'll tell you right now that identity resolution is something that is a topic um, no matter what, your, what vertical you're in. In electricity and natural gas, it was meters and facilities and ops. It's like, you know, the, the which machine you're talking about. And in sales and marketing here, you know, we talk about contacts and accounts at the very least. So what I'm going to do, this is just giving a quick overview of what we're going to talk about. First, I'll kind of introduce Hull quickly, talk a little bit about the unified profile, which is um, sort of the goal of good identity resolution, putting together correct um, user profiles and account profiles. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the different definitions of identity resolution that people have um, and some of the challenges and the, uh, the, the things that can happen if you don't have good identity resolution. And then um, I'll talk about our approach to resolving identities. Um, specifically, I'm going to be we'll be diving into some code examples where we'll talk about tracking identity across your website. So the, the previous webinar, we talked about bringing in data from your um, incoming webhooks or from your backend database. Um, this is just another place where identity resolution on your website comes into play. And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more in a little bit. So real quick, Hull is a customer data platform where you're able to bring in all of your data sources um, to create those unified profiles. You cleanse, transform that data, and then ultimately segment that data to drive act automated action across your stack. So you're able to automate personalization. Um, you're able to automate um, processes like notifications or the ability for your salespeople to reach out um, to some of these customers right when they're um, best uh, willing to engage with your, with your company. So I think today we're mostly talking about unifying your data sources as that uh, identity resolution is kind of the, the final phase in unifying your data sources. Uh, previously, we had talked about some simpler um, unification like around email um, and uh, I think it was primarily on email. This time we'll, we'll get into anonymous IDs and cookies and backend um, IDs. So just a quick um, review, the unified profile or the 360 degree view or the golden record or the single source of truth. I think they're, they're all kind of talking about the same thing. It's the ability to see um, who your customer is across services and what they're doing across services and how they're interacting with your company across these services. So you'll see on the left, you have um, attributes, things like job title, uh, demographics, technographics. And then on the right, you'll see how a person is actually interacting with each of your, um, each of your services. And I'll show you um, some of the uh, profiles that we're about to build as well with some of the website data that we're about to dive into. So just a quick poll, uh, how familiar are you with the concept of identity resolution? So uh, I think the, uh, the data philosopher in me says that probably most, the majority of data problems I think can be attributed to identity resolution in some form. I think my, my previous job, we were trying to identify what an individual facility was based off of certain data. Um, in sales and marketing, we try to identify a particular person 
a person across jobs, and then um, also accounts, certainly, um, depending on what your uh, account-based marketing strategy is. Let's take a quick look at the poll. Okay, great. So we're sort of in the middle, um, not too familiar, um, but not, uh, but know a little bit about it. So that's great. I won't get any super hard questions, hopefully. <laughs> um, okay, so what is identity resolution? So in sales and marketing, when we talk about identity resolution, I think at the, the very first level, we're talking about a person. We're talking about a person that you're trying to match between systems. And so your, what a person may look like on your back end um, you know, who, having signed up for an account um, with a company name and everything may look very different, does look very different than a person on, who's on your marketing website who's looking at the pricing page. And so identity resolution is be, the ability to tell across these different life cycles um, of the customer journey who is the same person. So in the last webinar, we talked about a pretty simple case where um, we're stitching together profiles using the email. Um, and that's pretty straightforward for the most part. People can change their emails and, and there's a little bit of um, ambiguity there sometimes, but typically email is a pretty good um, unifier. When, when you're not talking about email, when you're talking about backend systems or anonymous users, you have to get a little bit more creative with, um, with your identifiers. So uh, essentially what you're looking for is a common stable identifier or, or a pair of identifiers to stitch these user profiles together. And we'll get into that. So some of the consequences of poor identity resolution, I think everybody has seen duplicate records before. Um, that's when you don't know how to merge profiles correctly or what data points to merge them on. Um, and then I think we also have the opposite problem too, when you're merging a little bit too aggressively um, and you're actually taking two separate people and merging them together. I think a, a pretty good example of that is um, th there's a couple different um, strategy patterns for merging um, user profiles. Uh, one of them, for example, is if you have a link in one of your email campaigns, if a person clicks that link and go to your web goes to your website, that's one way to tie um, email open activity with their anonymous browsing activity. However, if that person forwards the email to a friend of theirs or someone else within the company, they click it too. You're also going to bring in their um, anonymous browsing traffic. Um, and so you could potentially be merging too, too many profiles together as well, and you'll have inaccurate tracking. Um, gaps in the data, certainly if you're, in, if you're bringing in data to enrich your, your people, um, if, you're, if you're trying to enrich your contacts um, with third-party data, um, if you don't get that enrichment right, um, the, the enriched data is not going to get onto the right profile. You're going to have gaps in your data. And then one that um, I think, you know, especially in ABM is pretty important that we're not going to get too much into today, but probably could be its own series is the ability to um, link a contact to the right account. Um, you know, especially when you've got, you know, somebody signing up with their Gmail address, not their company address, and potentially, um, you know, agency scenarios where a pers an individual person may be working on multiple accounts. There's, there's lots of different scenarios there that can get um, kind of ambiguous and difficult. But I'll come back to, um, you know, figuring out what is a good identity um, resolution strategy for you and your company. So this is probably about as high level as we'll get. Um, when, when you're talking about identity resolution, typically um, it, it, it will, the, de the definition will be different probably depending on who you talk to, but I think generally it falls into two pretty big buckets. And um, I'm having trouble a little bit kind of giving a crisp definition of each. Um, I think depending on who you talk to, it might be a little bit different. Um, but my definition is with deterministic identity resolution, you're actually talking about individual data points. 
So an email and a cookie or an email and external ID, two very unique data points that kind of that merge um, profiles in a consistent way. Um, when you're talking about probabilistic identity resolution, that's looking at things like behavior, things like um, statistics on how the person is interacting with your company and kind of guessing at um, who this person is. And I think maybe another way to look at it is deterministic identity re resolution will always kind of end up um, with the same unified profile. Probabilistic, probably depending on how you combine it and in what order you may end up with different profiles. And I think that's still kind of a growing field in our area. So in Hull, um, at a high level, um, we kind of talk about three different types of I identifiers. Um, so the more identifiers you have, the more flexibility um, you're given in being able to stitch these profiles together. So we want to cover, um, in our model, certainly we want to cover the easy case. The easy case is if you've got email address or um, a domain name for a company. Where it gets a little bit more interesting is if you are able to have some sort of external ID tied to these users. And an, and an external ID um, is usually a representation of an ID in a database. So for example, if you're a SaaS company and someone signs up for, um, for your service as a trial or um, as an active account, um, typically on the back end, you'll have an ID that's related to an individual row in your database, and that's not going to change. It may only get deleted. Um, and if you have that ID, that's a pretty powerful way of identifying users because even if they get go into your product and change their email address, um, you're still tying them back to that same ID. And then finally, anonymous ID um, is sort of a big concept for us, which is um, it sort of encompasses all of the IDs that you may have at any point in time that's not a first class concept. So um, an example of an anonymous ID may be um, the cookie um, that's associated with your browsing session when you're on the website. We don't know too much about you, um, but we know that this cookie value is tied to your browsing activity. Um, in addition, um, we also use anonymous ID um, to, to carry service IDs as well. So when you begin stitching together these user profiles um, from Salesforce, HubSpot, all these different services, um, those all have IDs as well. And so what we do is we take those IDs and we allow you to have multiple anonymous IDs, just like you can have multiple cookies and multiple service IDs. And we allow you to stitch together profiles based off of a bag or uh, a... Um, a collection of anonymous IDs, and this is this allows us to have lots of flexibility in, um, you know, tying together different profiles um, and different in using different types of IDs. All right, so I'm going to show you kind of a quick uh, a quick demo um, that I put together where a person is browsing anonymously on a website. Um, they sign up for a blog using their email, and we're able to stitch those profiles together. And then they sign up for an account, at which point we can stitch together back-end product data as well. Okay, so... All right, so I am not a front-end developer, uh, but I put together this little site um, with a couple different links where we'll show you how to stitch together user profiles. Um, I just, I quickly put this site together locally using a little bit of HTML um, and ngrok, which proxies traffic um, to my local machine. Um, where I'm running a, a local web server. So here's my home page. Um, here's what the the HTML looks like on the home page. Um, so pretty straightforward. You know, I don't even have. I just have an image for our single source of truth here, and then I have nav links. 
Um, what I'll call to your attention real quick is this script tag. Um, so Hull has what we call the website connector. And when you install this connector, um, like most other pixels, like the Google Pixel or the Facebook Pixel, we give you a tag that you can put on your website. And you can embed it straight in the head of, of an HTML page, or you can use Google Tag Manager and put this tag in that as well. So the idea is that um, when your web page is loaded, um, we're able to kind of control um, the tracking of a person on that web page when they load your web page. And then certainly, um, you know, when you install it, you need to specify your domain um, when, you're, um, when you're installing the connector. So here, first option is I'm going to enable tracking. Um, so anytime somebody hits this, um, hits this home page, we're going to get a page view. And I'll show you what that looks like. So even just me clicking around like this, you know, this is going to look like somebody clicking around on the website. So what this looks like is what we call an unknown user. And we've got, you know, all the clicks here. And it, they actually give us a decent amount of information, um, you know, where I am in Georgia, kind of where I was coming from. The, you know, I went from the sign-up page to the dashboard. I'm in Atlanta. Um, this, this, especially if you have a global brand, is helpful in targeting different um, regions of the world. Um, and what you'll see on the left here as it relates to identity resolution is I have no email, I have no external ID, but I have a, an anonymous ID, a cookie right here. Um, the cookies are stored um, as part of your, in your browser. We do have a fallback to your local storage as well if cookies are disabled. Um, so the first thing I'll show you right here is, so say I'm clicking around here, pricing page, and I, eventually I end up on your newsletter page. And I, I want to sign up to, for the newsletter. I'm not ready to buy yet, but maybe I just want to hear what's going on. So you know, I'm going to say, Tim, May 17th. Uh, unique email. That's great. So now what I'm going to be able to do is um, I'm going to be able to tie this anonymous browsing data to a profile like this. So previously, for example, Angela, we showed in the last webinar, um, we had we used an incoming webhook to show that she registered for the webinar. Um, we're seeing that she's opening and um, replying to emails. This is all based off of email. Um, and this this tracking is done, uh, you know, through your marketing automation and you know through a webhook um, that we created last time. And so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to show you what that profile looks like um, once you've joined in um, anonymous browsing data. Actually, so I, I have this um, this person pre um, preloaded um, with Angela's browsing data. Actually, you can see the one that I just did um, now showing up. And that's bringing together a whole bunch of data that I've been playing around with. Um, what it should look like if you know I haven't been logging in and again and again is something like this, where you have a user merged, and then you have all of their email um, activity, and then you have all of their uh, browsing activity before that. And actually, it turns out maybe she had registered for a webinar um, before she began browsing. So we have lots of different types of data now that we're able to look at. And I'll show you real quick in the Website Connector how to do this. So with the, with the whole JS tag, what, we're, what you're able to do is you're able to inject code, um, custom code, with the tag to call out um, the, the very specific events that you want to track. So for example, right here, I'm saying if I'm on the newsletter page, um, track a signed up for newsletter and um, pull the properties using this properties method. Um, and so what this properties method is, it takes in a form, it pulls out all the properties, but it actually specifically looks for email. And so if email is there, what I'm doing is that I'm actually saying, put email now on this profile. And once you've put email on the profile, it will unify um, the anonymous browsing data with um, the profile that was based off of your email. 
resulting in a, a user that looks like this, where you have your email and you also have your cookie as well. So there, like we said last time, um, the more information and the more behavior that you're, you have in your profile, the more you're able to personalize and target um, your prospects. And actually this one you know, had some CRM data as well, where we knew that she registered for a webinar last time. So that's great. We've uh, put together a pretty good profile um, you know, before they've become a customer. This, is, this stuff is great for attribution, for personalization. Um, you know, if they did come in initially via a, um, some sort of campaign, you'll have UTM parameters here. So the next thing she may do, um, you know, your, your salespeople are reaching out, they're calling her, they're emailing her. Um, you know, setting up meetings, all of which can now be put in the timeline. Well, now she actually goes to your site and um, says, okay, I want to actually sign up now. So, let's see. So we're putting in, um, and it doesn't have to be email address necessarily, um, but it, it can be something else. Um, so I'm signing up with this email tim um hold on. Oh, we're creating our trial account so this stage we're, what we want to do is and she you know i begin to click around in the dashboard at this stage what we want to do is we want to actually tie back all of the things that are very specific to your product into the user profile last time we showed the sql importer pulling plan data in um, so from, from the client side, from the browser, um, the way that you can do this is by talking to your, um, your product, your engineering team and, and, be, and give, asking them to put the external ID of this user on the dashboard itself. And typically it's there in some form. Um, but what we want to do is we want to pass that back to Hull. And so there's lots of different ways to do that. I, I think before I kind of mentioned that all of all of the things that we're doing on the front end here, you know, associating anonymous ID to email, email to external ID, these can all be done on the back end as well. So for example, that newsletter um, submission, I could actually add um, the anonymous ID as one of these inputs, send it to the back end, and then the back end actually tracks and relates that anonymous ID and that email together. Um, so there, there's lots of different ways to do this depending on your resources and what you're comfortable with changing. This particular way um, that I'm going to show you is more popular with people who are a little bit more security conscious. Um, so the, the external ID itself uh, may be something that you don't want to share. So what you're able to do is you're able to construct a JWT token um, with the different claims for this user. So for example, external ID, which will be your ID in the database itself, and the anonymous ID, which is the cookie value um, that we're tracking. And you're able to encode that with as a JWT token. And when it's encoded like that, it looks like this. And uh, um, in, in the resources um, in the follow-up, um, we can include uh, some of this some of this information. We have several guides for creating JWT tokens and the different ways you can use to track forms. Um, what I did really quickly was go to this JWT site um, and I threw in this claim. And then it generates the um, it generates the JWT token for you. Um, and then I put it on, you know, our dashboard page right here and put it as the access token. So typically this will be something uh, dynamically generated either, um, you know, by your backend team who's rendering this page or you could potentially do it client side as well. Um, and so now once I've landed on the dashboard page, I'm able to associate not just, um, you know, my cookie and my email, but I'm also able to associate my external ID too, 
um, which is the ID in my database where I can bring in interesting information like, okay, I, I signed up for the free trial. What's the plan I signed up for? What are the products I signed up for? Um, you know, what are the interesting um, things um, that I'm doing inside the product? These are all things now that we're able to um, unify with email data, browsing data, as well as, um, you know, the um, data like the data that's coming in from webhooks like your webinars. So let's see, I think I covered just about everything. Um, all right, let's go back here now. And um, we can definitely get into any any one of these concepts a bit more. Um, I think Angela posted a link um, in for a, a Zoom meeting right after the webinar, where we will be, um, you know, I'll be able to answer any questions. Will not be able to necessarily, but I will do my best in answering any questions that you have on any individual part um, of this uh, series that I was presenting. Let's see. Okay. So just to recap, um, you know, identity resolution is a pretty big part of, you know, man uh, managing your customer data. Um, certainly, you know, if you're coming from the side of the house where you have very messy data, it becomes kind of a cleanup project, but it's also um, an ongoing um, project as well, just making sure that your um, data flow supports um, all of the edge cases that are for your business in particular, um, making sure that you're marrying up the right identifiers and um, you know for for your needs as a business. So we also talked about um, some of the bad things that could happen if you don't um, think about identity resolution, um, and then we talked about a couple flexible ways that you can unify um, the profiles, particularly as somebody browses your website. So the next webinar, we're going to dive into data cleansing a bit more. So this is sort of that um, back population of um, all of the, the data that you might need to get yourself to the point where you can maintain a good identity resolution going forward. Um, data cleansing has always been a part of, uh, you know, my data career as you know you're coming into any particular data project you're not sure exactly what you're walking into hull provides several really good tools for cleaning up your data and mass and fanning it back out into lots of different systems so angela is going to post a link i think she already did um so I think we have a couple minutes um, in here left if anybody had any questions, but then, uh, you know, otherwise we can jump on to the Zoom meeting. All right. Well, thank you guys uh, for your time. We'll see you at the next one.